What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did in the markets today, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade right now in the middle of September in 2019. I also wanted to talk about the interest rate cut, guys, and kind of go over some key points from the Fed meeting today that I do have on my phone here from some notes that I kind of just want to share with you guys because it does give us a sense on the demeanor for the Fed right now in terms of interest rate cuts, which might not be the best news for the stock market. So if you enjoyed this video, if you find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market, trading, and investing, and let's get right into it starting off here with the S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We can see here, ended up closing the day up a dollar and three cents, up 0.03%. Not much movement at all in terms of the close, but when you dig into the intraday chart here, you guys can see we were pretty much flat. Then we got that Fed meeting. We got a 25 basis point, basis point rate cut, which... You can see how that reacted, you know, from 29.96 all the way down to about 29.78. Then we got that crazy recovery pretty much back up to where we ended up closing yesterday. If we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, very similar, right? We pretty much... St we're, we're still for the for the beginning of the day really for the majority of the day really still calm waters and then all of a sudden boom we dropped the 26900 popped all the way up to $27,160 and if we go here on the 184 hour you guys can see kind of the uh, trend right now on the Dow and then ended up closing the day up 36 points up 0.13%. The NASDAQ here guys is up $8 right now, $8.50 to be exact, up 0.11%. And if we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see very, very calm throughout the night in terms of the futures, you know, into the trading day today, because the markets were waiting for this Fed cut. The markets were waiting to see the demeanor of the Fed before popping, you know, going up, going down. Um, you know, really, it's been like that over the past couple of days, as I talked about in the video earlier today, then all of a sudden, the NASDAQ went down 7800 then popped up all the way to 79.29. So let's hop back over here to the S&P 500 very quickly, guys. Go to the 184-hour chart and uh, talk about some support and resistance levels that I'm seeing right now. Really just two key levels that I'm watching, one of them being 29.50, which at this point, since we're holding 29.90 as a support and we closed into the 3,000 level, that level is not too relevant right now. So the next level I want to focus on is this all-time high at 3027. The fact that we are consolidating on that 2990 level in terms of technicals here, guys, this gives me reason to believe that we are trying to fill the gap up to that all-time high. And if we end up going to that all-time high, breaking that resistance, of course, we're going to be going to more all-time highs and there really won't be any resistances at that point. You know, because when something's moving to all-time highs, it keeps hitting all-time highs. There's really no level above that point because it's at an all-time high. So there's really just no resistances, only supports at that point. So let's say we break up to an all-time high. I'd be looking at 3025 as a support. You know, obviously 2990 is a support. And if we somehow break 2990, we start to sell off. Maybe we start to go towards those moving averages on the four-hour chart. That would be putting us right at that level that I just mentioned a couple of seconds ago at 29.50. So overall, that's what I'm looking at right now in terms of these technicals on the SMP. If we're going to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, we're trading between 26,900, which we actually tested earlier today, held that, solidified that as a support, and the resistance at around $27,300. We're pretty much trading within a three, four hundred dollar window 
right now. And if we zoom in a bit to the 20 day, one hour, you guys can see again, the solidified support bounce this morning. We're breaking out above the 50 SMA on the hourly chart. That's a good sign that we're swinging um, to the upside here. And I was actually reading something online. This is the first time in months that the Dow was actually down 200 points in one day. I believe this is the right stat. I'm not 100% sure because I could be remembering it wrong right now, but it's the first day that the Dow went down 200 points and then ended up closing in the green. I think that was the stat um, since it, maybe May, maybe a couple of months ago or something like that because if we just go back to that one day chart, you can see we were down 200 points at this point and then we ended up swinging all the way up to the green, closing up 36 points. But anyway, um, you know, the Dow Jones right now, you know, if we start to trend up to 27,300, you know, we could be breaking up to all time highs. And of course, if we break below this support, we may be going back down to test those moving averages, sim uh, similar as the S&P here um, on the four hour chart, putting us at the price of $26,600. So if we're going here to the NASDAQ right now, guys, it's very clear that we have held this older resistance as a new support at around 78.50. We held that level and it seems like we're making that bullish push right now up to the next resistance at around $8,000. So at this point, it's trading in between a 120 point window. That is the NASDAQ. And if we zoom in a bit here, you can see, you know, these technicals are holding strong. We're actually pulling down. We already did pull down. We maintain that 50 SMA as a support. And now we're just simply continuing the uptrend. We hit that higher high here um, in terms of this candlestick compared to this one. So that's a very good sign that the NASDAQ is wanting to push. And if you see it on the one hour chart here, um, you know, you can see it's very clear that we are simply continuing this uptrend with the pop today on a technical basis here. Let's say something crazy happens. We all know technicals go out the window. Let's say we get more tariffs, bad news involving the economy in general. This can trump the technicals and we can end up gapping down red very, very, very heavily, right? But as of now, again, technicals are looking good. Um, and really, that's what I'm seeing in terms of these major markets. So let me know down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts on the markets right now? I'd love to know. And let's just get into what ended up happening today and some key points that I'm looking at in terms of the Fed meeting that might not be great for the stock market here, that might not be the best news for the stock market. So we got a 25 basis point rate cut today, which a lot of us were expecting. I was expecting it. If you did research online, um, I thought, I think I saw a stat that was like 80% um, of people were expecting that. And that's what we ended up getting, right? And I'm pulling up some notes right now that I want to share with you guys that I think are pretty interesting in terms of the demeanor involving future rate cuts and what a lot of people in terms of you know the 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 fed the, the the fed members believe in terms of future rate cuts so first i want to start out by reading this so pa powell says economy merits moderate adjustments in rates federal reserve chairman powell says he thinks the current economy situation merits moderate adjustments to the fed funds rate to achieve the central bank's goals, a sign he doesn't expect this to be a part, to be the start rather, of a long rate cut cycle. He also doesn't think the Fed will use negative rate cuts, or negative rates rather, which Trump, President, President Donald Trump recently called for. Still, Mr. Powell said the Fed is prepared to be aggressive if appropriate. That's very key there. They're prepared to be aggressive if appropriate appropriate. So right now, he doesn't have the same mindset as Trump. If you understand what Trump wants right now, he wants the Fed to do 50 basis point rate cuts. You know, we got rate cuts, or rather the people in Europe, I forget what country did, but they got rate cuts. Trump was saying he wants the U.S. to cut rates way more aggressive, and obviously that would benefit the stock market, but Jerome Powell and everybody in the Fed right now, they're not wanting to do that. It doesn't seem like they want to be 
as aggressive, right? And Donald Trump tweeted something, guys. I'm sure you probably saw this. I'm about to read it for you right now. He he just goes at, at Jerome Powell. Let's be honest at this point. He attacks the Fed on Twitter, just like he attacks a lot of other people. He said here on this tweet that was tweeted 2.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve fail again, period. No guts, no sense, no vision, a terrible communicator. So he's pretty much just roasting Jay Powell because, again, Trump wants the Fed to be way more aggressive with these rate cuts. Trump wants them to cut 50 basis points, you know, if he could, probably even 75 basis points to really stimulate this economy because this is a lever that the Fed is pulling right now to really, um, you know, you know, force people, not really force people, but to, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for here to pretty much push people to, you know, invest in the stock market, maybe borrow more and just to really stimulate that economy with their money. And another thing I want to mention here about other fed officials, the fed, the feds dot plot of rate projections continues to show a rather fragmented view on the appropriate path for rates and the chart five officials saw no need for rate cuts this year. Five wanted to see a 1.875% funds rate for 2019, meaning a range of between 1.75 and 2%. And seven wanted a funds rate of 1.625%, which would imply a range of 1.5% to 1.75%. That's a discordant view for monetary policy and the sign that the Fed does not face easy choices as it heads towards the close of the year. So this just goes to show that a lot of the Fed officials, their minds are in different places. You know, a couple want no rate cuts, a couple want aggress more aggressive rate cuts, and a couple want moderate rate cuts, right? So this is just something to think about that the Fed's demeanor right now, it's not aggressive, it's not cut rates heavily, which would be great for the stock market, it's more moderate. A lot of people don't even want rate cuts for the rest of the year. So this is not the best news, in my opinion, for the stock market. The 100% best news would have been if we got a 50 basis point rate cut and if we got further, really, affirmation that there was going to be aggressive rate cuts in the future, which we just simply did not get. So what do you guys think about, about that? Let me know down below in the comment section. I love talking to you guys and getting your opinions, you know, bouncing ideas um, off of each other. It's just great um, having this community. I'm really blessed and thankful for all of you guys out there. So now transitioning into my trading, guys. Honestly, I didn't really trade anything today. Like I mentioned earlier in uh, earlier today's earlier video, you know, at that point, I didn't take any trades because I was waiting to see how the market was going to react to this decision, to the meeting, to everything that we just talked about. And that's just me being precautious. That's just me being um, a bit you know, not, not, not trying to risk a lot at this point, because again, the markets are very volatile surrounding these decisions, surrounding these times where there are fed meetings. And I didn't end up trading at all guys, but tomorrow it's going to be a different day because I'm interested in seeing what these futures are going to look like in the morning, what these large caps are going to be looking like in the morning. And potentially, you know, if we start to get pushes in one, uh, ETF that I'm watching, you know, that's going to be one that I'm going to be interested in playing. And we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes here. But I also figured I'd let you guys know that I did take a little loss today on one of my swing positions on AT&T. AT&T has been getting crushed over the past couple of days. If we zoom in on this little 20-day uh, chart, you guys can see actually the five-day chart might be better. The five-day, five-minute, you guys can see you know, it's been straight downtrend ever since we hit that peak at around $39. You know, these moving averages have been acting as resistances. You guys know I was in, I forget the price point off the top of my head at this point, but I was in around the 37, 38 range, somewhere in there. And uh, you guys can see we had a 40 cent loss today down 1.08%. So I did take, I believe it was like a 1.5% loss. I just ended up cutting because we've been struggling to break out of these moving averages 
resistances. And once we do, if we do on AT&T here, you know, that might be a point in time where I hop back in. So, you know, talking about some stocks that I'm watching, AT&T definitely is one of them, right? If we do get that you know, confirmation that we are breaking out of these moving average resistances. You know, if we zoom back out to the 184 hour chart, that may be a point in time where, hey, we may be holding that 50 SMA, but at this point we're breaking below it. So maybe we might be going down to 36 flat, which if you zoom out a bit more on the one year, one day, maybe the three year, uh, one week chart, you might be able to see it. You know, that level here, 36, is a support level that AT&T could definitely hold based on a historic uh, chart here on the three-year, one-week chart. So that's kind of what I'm watching at this point. You know, I didn't want to hold this one overnight because, again, it's still downtrending in terms of this 20-day, one-hour. But just because I sold out, um, it doesn't mean that I'm not looking to re-enter. If the opportunity presents itself, I might re-enter um, into ticker symbol T. ATNT and at the guys I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about at the um, ATVI I'm still holding at the guys I'm still actually holding at V because if we look on this 20 day one hour chart you know we are still holding this uptrend at this point in time we're holding that 180 SMA support on this 20 day one hour chart which has been a support over the past couple of weeks and this is a good sign ideally here I would love to see a break out of the 50 SMA and then ultimately a break out of um, the, the, uh, this resistance here at $56 and for us to hold that level as a new support, you know, that's where I'm looking to add more money. And when I initially took this swing position, guys, um, I was talking to you guys about how I want to give it more wiggle room, more wiggle room than AT&T, which AT&T already cut. And this one, you know, I feel more comfortable because the technicals look a bit better, um, you know, on this chart. But anyway, you know, I'm looking to give it more wiggle room. Um, you know, right now I'm pretty much even on the position because I'm in at around 55.10 and we closed at around 55.12. So I'm literally up like two cents a share right now. Nothing really at all. Um, but like I said, if we pop, that might be a point in time where I do add more money to ATVI. And uh, some other stocks that I wanted to talk about today in this video. Video. I'm pulling up my phone. I wanted to take a look at gold, guys, and this goes back to that ETF that I'm looking to trade. So gold right now is looking like it wants to correct down to 1450, guys. That's honestly what I'm thinking right now. On this four-hour chart, we can see gold peaked at 1566. We failed to hold that 180 SMA support that's been a support over the past couple of weeks, which was the first sign that we may start downtrending at this point. And since then, you know, we've tried to break out above the 180 SMA to, uh, you know, continue the bull run, but we've gotten rejected multiple times, which is the second confirmation that this may be bearish. And right now, another one that we're seeing is the 50 the SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, which is bearish in general in terms of moving average crossovers, which is the third confirmation that this is pretty bearish. And now we're getting the dump as you guys can see, and uh, it's just the waiting game at this point, right? If we get that dump and really the ultimate break below 1495, this could be a great opportunity to short gold by trading JDST, which is what I'm looking to do, right? JDST goes up whenever GDX is going down, which is a gold ETF, right? And GDX, you guys can see here, it failed to hold the 180 SMA just like gold, right? These moving averages are acting like a resistance. We're getting the bearish cross, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. You know, this is looking very, very good. Now, all we need to see is this dump down, and we need to see gold in the $1,400 level. Then we can definitely short it by trading um, JDST. And if we go back to gold, again, if we start to break down here, keep an eye on this level, 1450. This could be a great opportunity to maybe even buy some gold. This is a good pullback for those that maybe even want to buy some physical gold. Like me personally, I mentioned a while back, I don't know if you guys remember this, but the true viewers that watch these videos daily, you probably remember I said this, but I'm looking to buy some physical gold. Um, this may be the point in time where I might pull the trigger if we start to get down to 1450 and then I'm I'm going to make a video unboxing that for you guys. Um I think that would be fun because honestly, I don't view gold as an investment. 
I'm being honest. I'm just viewing it as a hedge against the economy, the dollar, etc. Right. And I don't have any of my portfolio right now. And honestly, I would only buy like 1% of my portfolio in gold just to have it, you know, just to have some diverse assets. You know, a lot of people, they stick to stocks. But the thing is, you know, it's great to just have your money spread across a lot of different things. That's why a lot of people buy stocks. They also buy bonds. They also buy gold. They also buy silver. Nowadays, people are putting money into crypto. Obviously, they put money into real estate. You can put money into, you know, anything really. Electronics that you think might go up in value in 20 years, like classic Nintendo games, baseball cards, you know. Spreading money across is a very good idea, and that's what I'm looking to do here with gold because right now I'm honestly really heavy in stocks. Obviously, guys, you know, this is a stock market channel. You know, I'm heavily invested in just having cash, right? That's not really an investment, but I'm very cash heavy right now as well. So I'm just looking to make some moves um, in, 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 other, in other asset classes at this point, just to be completely honest with you guys. And let me know down below in the comments what do you guys think about that. So another stock I'm watching right now is Facebook. This one's looking to squeeze in this wedge and ideally here I'm looking for it to break above 190. I've been talking about this over the past couple of videos. It really hasn't made that move yet but I feel like it's right there. It's so close. I just need to see that break into 190 and then for it to fill the gap up into the 200s, 205s. That's where I'm looking to start really building the position to capitalize on Facebook as a swing trade. Another one is Walmart WMT. This one held the 50 SMA nicely on the four hour chart. We're popping up looking to go to the 118s now. And honestly, if we break 118, this could be really just the continuation of the uptrend, a higher high, maybe another all-time high. And there's not much opportunity in Walmart at this point. You know, you, you'd be lucky to grab like 1, 2, 3, 4% at most at this point if you're looking to trade it and swing it. But still, I figured I'd mention it on this video, WMT. Another one is CMG, guys, which would have been an awesome play picking it up here um, at the 180 SMA. I missed it. I can't believe I missed it because I've been watching Chipotle for a potential entry and I've been covering it on these videos. But sometimes when you make videos every day, when you talk about a hundred different stocks every day, they slip through the cracks. You forget what you talk about. You forget um, which ones you, know, you just miss them, right? You just miss the plays. This is one that I missed. But at this point, this one could be trending back up into this resistance area right now. You know, it's looking to break it. You know, if we end up holding 830, 835, you know, this could be a play up to the, the high at about 857. That could be around a 2-3% um, swing trade. That's very, very possible in my opinion um, right now in terms of uh, CMG. So those are a couple of stocks and ETFs I'm watching. Uh, you know, mo mainly gold at this point I think is going to be very interesting these next couple of days. Walmart, Chipotle, um, AT&T, AtV. Another one very quickly, which is worth mentioning, is Roku. They actually dropped 13% today. We got some news that you guys can see here. Roku stock falls amid new competition and streaming from Comcast and Facebook, guys. So this one fell 13%. If it breaks the 180 SMA tomorrow, which could very well happen on this negative catalyst, this could be a short stock, a put option play, or, you know, if we end up holding this 180 SMA slowly recovering, that's a point where we've held as a support over the past couple of months, that's a point in time where we could potentially be continuing the uptrend there. So those are just a couple of stocks. My thoughts, you know, my thoughts on the Fed, the markets right now. Um, I'd love to know again, what are your thoughts on everything? And that's pretty much it for this video. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market, trading and investing. And I'll catch you all in the next video. If you stuck till the end, let me know down below in the comment section. Type in stuck to the end. I love seeing how many of you actually stick till the end. You guys are awesome. So thanks again for watching. Peace out.